On tonight's edition of the Overtime, we will review the historic season played by the Flagstaff Eagles volleyball team and their approach heading into next season. NAU soccer look to reclaim their Big Sky title from two years ago. We will take a look at how they fared. And finally, NAU football is coming off a crucial win against Weaver State. All that and more on this edition of The Overtime. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this edition of The Overtime, Northern Arizona's only sports show. I'm your host, Sam Oceans. We have a packed show for you tonight with a lot of local sports action. And joining me is sports reporter Cordero McMurray. Cordero, how's it going? We have a lot of sports out there. It's fun and exciting, so let's get into it. To start things off, the Flagstaff Eagles volleyball team made it all the way to the state quarterfinals, but were upset by the number six seed, South Point Catholic. Cordero, what happened to the Eagles in this match? Well, Sam, things started to change after the Eagles took the first set on Shuffleman's hitting air. Noni Thomas continued her defensive role, stuffing Duarte on a solo block in the second, highlighting a Flagstaff 6-0 run to put them up 7-5. However, the Lancers used a 6-3 run to end the second set and regain momentum. During the run, Thomas had a kill in the middle to cut the deficit from 23-18. But as the momentum was changing, coming down to the final moments of the game, the Lancers ended up victorious over the Eagles. Now looking back at the Eagles volleyball season, they were the number three team heading into this match against the number six team, South Point. I think now that their season is over, I'm looking forward for the juniors to lead the team next year as seniors and to start their season over next year ready to rumble. Well, that sounds like both teams gave it their all, but in the end, the Eagles were stunned. All in all, the Eagles had a historic season, finishing in second place in their conference with a 15-2 and record. And Flagstaff started the season with a massive 12-match winning streak. Not only that, but the Eagles beat their crosstown rivals, the Coconino Panthers, both times the teams faced off. The Panthers weren't too shabby either as they finished just behind the Eagles in the standings with an 11-6 and record and also made it into the playoffs. Let's move over to the pitch. NAU soccer shook off a slow start at the beginning of the season to make it all the way to the Big Sky Conference Championship game. The Lumberjacks took on the Eastern Washington Eagles in the Eagles' first ever championship game. NAU upset the Eagles earlier in the season with a 3-1 victory in Flagstaff. However, the Eagles weren't going to make it so easy this time around. How did the Big Sky title bout play out between the Jacks and Eastern Washington, Cordero? Well, opening up the second half, the Eagles connected on their 13th attempt following a corner kick. As the shots continued for Eastern Washington, so were the stops for NAU. With freshman defender Amanda Bennett, who was tasked with shutting down Eastern Washington's leading scorer, Chloe Williams, and she did just that. At the end of regulation, the Eagles had 18 shots and held NAU to three. Now the Lumberjacks and Eagles went into a second overtime period. Northern Arizona maintained most of the possessions in the final 10 minutes of the overtime with two chances off corner kicks, but could not connect. The Eagles won the shootout 4-3 to secure the championship and earn an automatic spot in the NCAA tournament. Now, I'm expecting NAU to use this season as a springboard for them to bounce back next year to dominate in the Big Sky Conference. This is an example of soccer at its finest. When teams have to decide a championship match on penalty kicks, that is the most exciting way to win. Another big factor in this game was the Battle of Sisters. For NAU, it was junior striker Anna Goble and little sister Kayla Goble, a redshirt freshman for Eastern Washington. The elder sister Anna was the main reason NAU got to the championship as she had two goals in the semifinals against Sacramento State, including the game winner that propelled them into the championship. Other than cross country, NAU volleyball is the most dominant program this season for the Jacks. And much of that success can be attributed to the outstanding play of seniors Lauren Jacobson and Jensen Barton. However, the final week of the season has become crucial for the Jacks' hopes of a number one seed after a shocking loss to Idaho State. Cordero, after this loss, is there cause for concern for the Lady Jacks? Well, Sam, the momentum was changing throughout this match. It all came down to a do or die fifth set. Idaho State broke a 4-4 tie going on a 4-0 run. Freshman Sydney Lima halted the run with a pair of kills to revive NAU and give them a 6-0 run. Redshirt freshman Hannah Cherry aced the Bengals to provide NAU with a 10-8 lead. 
Both of the teams battled, but the Lumberjacks got to a match point first at 14 to 13 following a Bengals attack error. And as momentum continued to bounce back and forth between the teams, Idaho State took command to clinch the match. With such a nail-biting game, I think NAU is looking to regroup and focus on polishing up some errors and some miscommunication. They play against Southern Utah next, and well, using this close loss to fire up the team, I think NAU can come out with this strong win. Yeah, and beating Southern Utah is crucial for NAU if they want home court advantage and the number one seed. The Jacks have an 11-3 record in conference and are chased closely by Sacramento State, who are on a hot streak, and the resilient Idaho State Bengals. NAU played an equally important match against the leader of the Northern Conference, North Dakota, yesterday. Results for that game can be found at NAUathletics.com. And to our final topic of the evening, it is NAU football, and oh, how things have gotten interesting for these Jacks as they have won four of their last five games, including important victories over Montana and Weber State. Last weekend, NAU had the tough task of beating the Weber State Wildcats, who had only lost one game in the Big Sky all season. Up to that point, Cordero, how were the Jacks able to upset the Wildcats? Sam, this was a great game for the Lumberjacks. Weber State's defense was averaging 397 yards allowed per game, and NAU put up 503. As Joe Logan rushed for 74 yards and Kendall Taylor broke free of a tackle for 60 for 61 yard touchdown run out of that Wildcat formation, this helped spark some energy within the Lumberjacks as the lead had been cut down to 26 to 20. Now with the Lumberjacks leading the way and finishing the game strong with the win, the Lumberjacks are still in the reach for the playoffs. Looking at their last four games that they have won, I'm expecting them to ride this hot streak to their advantage as they travel to North Dakota next week. The one thing for any of you to focus on is executing defensively to come out with a solid win against North Dakota. Yeah, Cordero, you mentioned the elephant in the room. NAU will take on the number one team in the Big Sky tomorrow in North Dakota. The Jacks will look to be the first Big Sky team to beat North Dakota this season. However, I believe that NAU's defense has found their stride. The Jacks may have a fighting chance as North Dakota has scored 20 points or more eight times this season. On the offensive side, look for breakout running back Joe Logan to continue his impressive season. Logan is averaging 95 yards a game, and even though North Dakota has a great rush defense, Logan will still play a factor.